Good morning. It's me, Monkey Pipes. Today is Tuesday, August 17th, 2021. And we got a fun-filled day ahead. But first, we got some gifts in the mail, so let's check them out. This one from Amazon, Pipe Doctor, for those cold days to set the charge. Hmm, I wonder what's in here. And also, from our very good friends at Ellie Tech, this is their brand new intelligent digital manifold. This is model EMG-40V. We're gonna check this out today. Stay tuned. All right, so for the first gift, this is the field piece charging jacket. Pretty cool stuff. Oh, by the way, make sure you check out Anti-DIY HVAC. Ted is a great guy. This is his latest video. Field piece charging jacket. This you place over the condenser when charging in cold weather. Like that. Check it out. Can't wait to check it out. Maybe uh, in a month or two. Good stuff. Thank you so much. I don't know who sent this. Is there a love note inside? No, no love note. But thank you so much, whoever sent that. Much appreciated. All right. Let's check out the Ellie Tech. Also, this is a gift I got last week. Thank you so much, Mikey Pipes. I'm a plumber. My level of sarcasm depends on your level of stupidity. <laughs> true indeed. True indeed. Let's check out this Ellie Tech. We have a compartment on top for wired temperature probes. I prefer the wireless ones, like the Testos. Still good stuff. Cool. Goes in a little, little cloth compartment there. We also have an AC adapter and USB. Here's the main module. It's got some weight to it. It's got a hook on the bottom. Kind of like Captain Hook. Not bad. Not bad. We have some buttons on the side to turn it on. Looks like the charging port. Let's check that out. Nope, that's for high side temperature. Low side. This is USB. And it's got some nice gel feel to, to it. A little bit of a gel coating on the rubberized knobs and also the side panel. Let's turn that on. See if one handed Mike could do it. Yep, there it is, Ellie Tech. She's starting up. I'll spare you the details. While that's booting up, I just want to take a look at the ends. It looks like they're using that those white nylon um, gaskets in there. I'm not a fan of those. I tend you tend to like have to put extra little extra on it when tightening it up. But we do have some valves making them a little loss. We have an adapter here. Very nice. Very very nice. Okay, she started up. Let's see what we got. Let's go to... Oh, look, it's nice. I like it. Let's go to R410A. So we're going to use this thing on. All right, so it's responsive. Very nice. Okay. Pretty cool. What does that frost thing do? Hmm. Cool stuff. I don't see a manual anywhere in here, but I guess it's kind of self-explanatory. And we'll get a chance to use this later to, later today. Good stuff. Ellie Tech EMG 40V. There'll be a link down or links down in the description box down below to their homepage and product pages for this. Pretty cool. Special thank you to Ellie Tech. Thank you so much for sending this to us and being a sponsor of our channel. Hopefully it rates pretty well. It fits right back in there. Let's turn that off. Pull down that button. Pull down some longer period of time. There you go. Okay, good stuff. We'll check this out a little bit later. And I just want to say thank you to everyone, the entire community. You know, um, you guys are amazing. And what's really even more great about this community is that we all learn from one another. You know, uh, I learned many things from the comments and from the viewers, you know, like, hey, put the filter dryer inside the house, dummy. I was like, you know what? Good idea. I did that. 
good, good stuff. Good, good stuff. So thank you so much. And the way I give back is we have giveaways and I have free stickers. If you want a free sticker, version one or two, version three is not released yet. And I will let you know when it does and it will be very limited supply. But email me, mike at mikeypipes.com and check us out on WhatsApp and Discord. Links are in the description box down below. All right, let's get the day started. Oh, and by the way, several of you have expressed interest in this. And whoever wants it, the highest bidder is going to get it. Weighs about 40 pounds, though. But the American Radiator Standard Sanitary Corporation. This came off that wildebeest. All right, heading off to my first job. Client has a steam system for their home. And it's making a banging sound. So sounds like either we have a problem with pressure or possibly a clogged wet return preventing condensate from reaching back to the boiler. And I know it's August 17th and why they're calling now about this, maybe preventatively, but I guess we'll soon see. All right, stay tuned. Make sure you thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, consider subscribing. There's no cost or obligation. All right, consider it. All right, let's go. All right, this job is in Belrose, Belrose, Queens. And it's actually like two houses away, two blocks away from one of my uh, best friends. Actually, my best friend, actually. Shout out to Brown Boy. Brown Boy, I know you're watching, Brown Boy. See that, it's across island. You live right over there, buddy. I miss you. Gotta come over and let's go for a swim and have some drinks. All right, but I'm over in this block, 241st Street. Parking is going to be a bitch, but we'll be all right. All right. Let's see what's going on. No answer at the door. Let's give him a call. Hello? Uh, good morning. Um, is it Hector? Yeah, you're outside. Here. Yes, I'm at your front door. What's going on? So, okay, thanks. <laughs> is that electric or gas? It's, uh, it's, it's fake. Hi. Don't bite. I'm a friend. Okay. All right. Let's see. Uh, I know there's a for the heating. Yes. But we're doing some work in the basement. Okay. It's probably going to cover up the fire. So okay. It's probably going to be hard to check anyway, but I figure. Tell me what's going on. And what happened? Bang, the banging, the hammering. Okay. So. What about the whole house? Yeah, but I think it's coming from the pipes in the basement. All right. Let's go see the basement. Nice floor. Throughout the whole house, very nice. Good old finished basement. Uh, no, we're, we're doing some work. Relax, puppy. Relax, relax. relax all right. So, uh, all right, burn him steam boil. Don't oh, cook. All right, and your return is underground. Okay. You want to be a YouTube star? <laughs> When was the last time you had maintenance? Maintenance? I don't. I, I do like. I, 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 I discharge the water every day. Every okay. Day. And that's about it, really. All right. Uh, train there. Okay. When's the last time it was professionally maintained? Okay. We're gonna turn the steam on and see if we can duplicate it. So it's one of two things. Number one, you have too much pressure in the system. And it's causing that, and that's maybe because the pigtail is dirty. This is the pigtail. This keeps the technically the latent heat off of the pressure control. So if that's clogged, the build the boiler can build up too much pressure, and you can cause that banging sound. Alternatively, you have a clogged wet return, and water condensate is not making its way back to the boiler. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. We got to see where the other end of this is, which is yeah. Yeah, let's go see. Okay, it goes up. Oh, no, I don't want to step on that. Oh. It goes down there. All right, so he's got a brand new wet return that he replaced underground. This line pitched 
all the way back to the boiler like that, but you want it to increase headroom and put the line underground. All right, I have the client I'm gonna turn on the, raise the thermostat up and fire up this boiler. As I said, this is the pressure troll. This is the pigtail. This is 24 volt transformer. This is a probe style low water cutoff by McDonald Miller. Here's your sight glass, water level indicator mark. This is your Hartford loop here, right? This is electronic ignition control for the electronic Honeywell gas valve. This is the pilot tubing. And this right here is your spark wire going to the pilot assembly, which we hear ticking away right now. Let's see how clean we are in there. We have ignition and pilot. A little bit of debris in there, nothing terrible. All right, we have main ignition. So let this thing run and see if we have pressure buildup. This is the relief valve. I don't see any indication of discharge coming from that. This is a 15 PSI relief valve. Let's make sure that is. Let's make sure. Yep, 15 PSI. You see that right there? Try to, there you go. Okay, let's let this run and see what happens. So it's been about about three minutes. We already hear steam being created. The water's boiling already. So you can hear that. I hope that's not indicative of other issues. No, I don't see any rust. So I don't think we have any cracks in the heat exchanger or holes in it. That's a good thing. We're gonna keep an eye on the sight glass and also the pressure indicator is reading a two. So far so good. I feel a lot of heat coming out of here though. See that? I don't know if you can see that. Hmm. Interesting. Pressure is increasing. One observation, this is a no-no. Having paint, paint cans near flame needs to go. I'll let him know. All right, I got the Testo 320. Let's see what this thing is burning at. I got the probe in there. This is the diverter that you normally see, that bell-shaped thing, kind of like that, on top of a boiler. This is a diverter, so you want to be before that. Let this run, see what we got. All right, let's take a look at our pressure. Looks like it's right around seven or eight PSI. We probably have about that. I just popped open the relief valve. The boiler's running. Sometimes you tap on it and they turn off. All right, let's take a peek inside there. All right, we're about 10 PSI now. We are making tons of steam. Let's go feel the wet return. She's warm. She's warm. All right, we're still climbing with pressure. She should have went off a long time ago. Let's just make sure that this is wired correctly. Good, that kills flame. Let's pause that. Numbers look okay. Could be better, but okay. All right. Get that pressure in there. I'm wondering if this is really accurate. Let's take apart the pigtail. I always wear gloves. Keeps my hands clean. We'll soon find out if this thing is clean or not. Yep, I scratched the boiler jacket. Let me use two hands. Now another thing to consider, if the pigtail is not clean, or not clogged, it could also be the valve. The valve body could be clogged up. Let's check out the pigtail. I believe 
to a laundry sink. Not terrible. Not really clogged up, but I'm gonna let this run flush out this pigtail, get all the debris out of there. I blew on it with my mouth. All that debris came out. Look at all that. I just blow on it. Pretend it's a big black thing. Get it nice and clean, and then I'll, whatever debris is in the sink, I'll take my spray on and clean that out. Make sure we don't leave a mess. Be professional, don't leave a mess. All right, now that the pigtail is clean, let's take out the top valve. All right, like this. Look at all that crap in there. And I take one of the rods. Oh, you don't want to cooperate, do you? Oh, really? It always works for me this way. There we go. Get it all the way in there. Use this as like a, as the, the cleaning tool. Get in there and get all that stuff out. Let me get a little bucket and some water. Clean this up. All right, I'm flushing some water through. Through the top set of valves, the T, and where the valve handle goes. Make sure that's all nice and clean. I've got towels on the floor, protect everything. All right, got the pigtail back in place. Drain the water uh, back down to where it needs to be. Pressure trolls connected, going through startup sequence. Vent damper is opening, and then we'll have ignition. And we'll see if it turns off at a much lower PSI. The other one didn't. Hopefully it was because it was clogged. We shall soon see. What's factual is this gauge is dead. It is not 13 PSI in the boiler. <laughs> Definitely not. I just turned it on. <laughs> yeah, they don't really last that long anyway. All right, just another observation. There's the steam main, which then goes that away. And he told me about that one. But a good technician is observant of his surroundings. Here's another one, which is hot. And we don't have a steam main vent here. Air, air valve, sorry. Steam main air valve, not a vent. Air valve, that's what it is. And there's another wet return, which is hot. It is hot. He did not specify replacing this one. I'll have to ask him about that. Hopefully they did. And is there a main vent here? No. No. Hmm. Nope. Usually they're at the ends of the mains. Let's do a little experiment here. If I lower this all the way down. Nope. All the way down didn't do anything. All right, after talking to the client, the homeowner, the radiator that's there, sometimes spits out water out of the steam radiator air valve and also the one in the front of the house does the same thing and that is a clear indication of wet return clogged so the solution here is we have to take this apart this inch and a quarter piping i'm almost positive and put in a valve a t with a boiler drain and put this back together I think that's inch and a quarter. And on the other side, in one inch, we have to do the same thing. And then at the boiler, just hope that we'll be all right, because ideally a valve here, and we could force water through the system. That's the solution. That's the solution. All right, I printed the combustion results. And I get these little shipping bags from, from Uline. And you don't seal the top, but every year when you do a combustion test, you put the next one in and you can reference the previous ones. I also take a picture of this on the ServicePal app and that way they have a record of it. Not only the customer, but us as well. All right, I got an inch and a quarter nipple. No. Why am I so stupid right now? Yeah, it's inch and a quarter. Yeah, it's inch and a quarter. Yeah. 
inch and a quarter. That's inch and a half. And they size down to inch and a quarter. Actually, this is, that's inch and a, let me get my tape measure. <laughs> Boy, it was been off for about 15 minutes and still reading 15, sorry, 13 PSI. See, nothing in the system. Bad pressure gauge, bad. All right, let's go update the client. Oh, the dog. Can you relax? Relax. All right. Shh. We need to replace the pressure troll. Okay. The pressure gauge. The pressure gauge has been, the boiler's been off like 15 minutes. It's still showing 13 PSI. Okay. Uh, we're doing any work on it. Might as well change it. It's okay. really not a significant part. The return in the back, that's inch and a half piping. We're going to try to just crack that union that's there. And from there up, we'll put some nipples in, valves, and a purge station, and do the same on the front in that crawl space. Okay. We got to do that there as well. And we take water pressure with a back a backflow valve so we don't get any contamination of the tank, water tank. And then we flush water from the water heater or a faucet, whatever, and use house pressure to one end of it and force it back and out. Okay. Um, we'll see what happens. I would like to put a valve in um, by the boiler so we can isolate that, but there's really no play in any of the piping. So it's gonna be hard to do that. Uh, we could try, but ideally I'd like to put one there as well. Okay. But, um, you know, it's probably a good day job of work. Good day. Question? All right, one other observation of this service call, the defective pressure troll. Now, before leaving, I did tell him that it is possible that there's too much pressure building up in the system and causing water to go where it shouldn't now again it's far-fetched and i told him listen consider replacing the pressure troll first and let's see how the boiler with regulated pressure operates again that's sounds a little far-fetched but in conversating with him all of the steam radiator air valves hiss continuously when the boiler is on and that may be too caused by all of them being defective, but you never know. You could have defective steam radiator air valves that aren't closing when they sense uh, the water vapor and then continuously hissing. And the automatic feeder on the boiler is going to refill the system, which then is going to accelerate the wear and tear in the heat exchanger and so on and so forth. But if there's too much pressure in the boiler and the pressure troll does not turn off the boiler, the only time the boiler is going to turn off is when the thermostat gets satisfied and reaches temperature. So before I left, I said, listen, maybe consider this replacing the pressure troll first and see what happens. He's going to speak to his spouse and uh, see what he's going to do. But nonetheless, we're in the middle of August, so it doesn't want to wait too long. And um, maybe you'll get lucky. Maybe just a defective pressure troll with too much pressure. So maybe we'll try that first. All right, let me get your thoughts and feedback down in the comment section down below. A lot of you guys don't deal with steam. We have a lot of homes and a lot of properties here in the metropolitan New York, Long Island area do have steam heat. I happen to like it. It's nice. Those steam radiators stay nice and hot and toasty for quite some time. But also, if you have little kids in the house, it it's also could be a hazard unless they're covered, you know, with those radiator covers. All right, Mikey Pipe signing off. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.